Good morning. Hello. Hello. Welcome to another video. So in this video, we're doing an epic tour all the way from Kathmandu. At the moment, we are in Lalitpur. This is the historical town of Lalitpur. You can see the UNESCO World Heritage Site of uh, Mangal Bazaar. Traveling from here all the way towards uh, Lhasa in Tibet. So it's going to be an epic journey and it's all going to be by land. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do this in bus more than thousands of kilometers so it's going to be quite fun eh? so yeah welcome to another video and here you can see early morning in Patan currently it's 3 in the morning 3 a.m. good morning good morning yeah so let's get started we are traveling to Tibet on a group tour organized by Hakka Tol in Lalitpur. We'll be taking the bus from Lalitpur all the way to Rasuagadi border. After crossing the border, we'll be taking a guided tour bus in Tibet. After a few hours drive from Kathmandu, we have now reached Trisuli Bazaar, where we will be having our breakfast. In the distance, you can see the settlements alongside the Trisuli River. Trisuli River originates in Tibet and enters Nepal from Kherom, which is our destination for today. After having our breakfast, we head back on the road towards our destination alongside the raising torrent of Trisuli River down below through some treacherous mountainside road. So we have now reached Shapru Besi. So Shapru Besi is the point from where you can start trekking to Langtang. We did this uh, two times. So here is Shapru Besi. The road is not in a very good condition, so it took us almost 11 hours to cover a distance of only 130 kilometers from Kathmandu to reach Rasuagari border. So the immigration is done, yeah. and we are heading towards the Rasuagari border. This is the Nepal China border. So now time to head there. Because uh, the border closes at 2. Currently it's 12 in the afternoon. One interesting thing that I've noticed is uh, you can see all these electric cars in here. These are all by a company called MG. And also there is another electric car. You can see the all of these brand new just arrived from China 
and heading towards the showroom in Kathmandu in this road condition but anyhow there you have it electric revolution Okay, let's thank you. Just had an amazing lunch at this hotel, Potala. Potala, Potala guest house. Potala guest house. Recommended. Very good food. And it's very close. We are next to the border. So here you can see the border. So in the distance, you see the, that is the border. So basically, everything here is Nepal and everything in there, that huge mountain and everything, that is China. Tibet. High five. <laughs> A warm welcome by the team of Tibet Travel Guides. And here are the two buses that will take us across Tibet all the way towards Lhasa. A very warm welcome in Tibet. And uh, next up is Kerum. The bus takes us up the road alongside the Trisuli River, which is called Kerum Sangpo in Tibet. in Tibet so the current time is 6 30 China time and it's about I guess 4 p.m. in Nepal so this is Kirum welcome to Kirum this is the hotel room here in Kirum Let's explore this Kirum town. It's currently 7:40 p.m. China time, 5:30 Nepal time. So it's still bright daylight. So the city of Kirum is situated at an altitude of 2,700 meters. It's very cool in here. The ambient temperature is about uh, 16 degrees centigrade, I guess. Kirum Valley, also rated as the most beautiful valley in Tibet is roughly 25 km north of Raswagadi border and is a bustling town surrounded by lush green hills with snow-capped mountains looming over the valley on all sides. Due to its close proximity with Nepal, we notice a lot of Nepali business, mostly restaurants and boutique shops. 
नेपाली दाजु भाई ठाकाली ओ नेपाली दाजु भाई ठाकाली वर्ल्ड फेमस ठाकाली Quick fact, in the entire Tibet, this is the only Nepali style temple. Time for dinner, and we'll be having dinner here. Okay. Oh, Nepali, welcome. So I'm here dinner, honey. Okay. 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 It was a long drive today and now it's time for a much needed dinner at a Nepali restaurant in Kirong. Hello, good morning from Kirong. So currently it's 6.50 a.m. China time. It's 4.30 in Nepal. We are heading up towards breakfast because today we have a long journey to make. Almost 12 hours towards uh, Sigatse from Kerong. We have some friends. You know, friendly is a good early breakfast today because we have a long distance to cover almost 600 kilometers from Kerong to Sigatse. The valley of Kerong reminded us of Nepal, the beautiful valleys in Nepal with its lush green vegetation, high mountains, truly a beautiful landscape. Just a few minutes drive from the Kerong valley we stop by at a scenic spot to marvel at a beautiful waterfall. Anyway, we are at this uh, waterfall, this beautiful waterfall by the roadside. Uh, you can see. Look. Waterfall. Woo! <laughs> Namaste. 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 <laughs> After a refreshing break at a scenic waterfall, we continued on our journey. The landscape seems to gradually change from lush green vegetation revealing the dry, arid, marsh like landscape of the Tibetan Plateau. officially in Tibetan Plateau so it reminds us of Upper Mustang in Nepal welcome to the Tibetan Plateau
this pass, this mountain road, this is a very windy road and uh, there are almost 4700 meters almost now. so you can see the windy roads The bus gradually climbs up a winding road up a mountain pass from an elevation of 4000 meters to 5200 meters. The panoramic view from this mountain pass is truly spectacular and the construction of road at this high elevation is truly a feat of engineering, a modern marvel. Welcome to the Kong Tang Lamu mountain pass. So we just crossed a high mountain pass. So it was at an elevation of 5200 meters. So that was quite high. And now we're descending. Uh, it's quite sunny at the moment. So talking about the weather, it's uh, very it's changing all the time. And uh, when you have sun, it's warm. And when it's cloudy, it's quite cold. So yeah, it's beautiful. As we descend down the mountain pass, we can see in the distance a beautiful turquoise blue lake simmering in the horizon. So here we are at a beautiful lake. This lake is known as Piku Lake. Piku lake. Right. We have a hot coffee. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers to Tibet. Yep. Cheers to Tibet. Beautiful. Situated at an elevation of 4,591 meters, this beautiful lake is surrounded by high mountains. And this lake is the first of many lakes we'll be driving alongside during this amazing road trip. Comfortable ride so far. The road is very good. The road is very nice. And this highway is on an average altitude of around 4,000 meters. Currently we are at 4,100 meters. It's a beautiful scenery out.
road from Kerong towards Sigatse is truly beautiful. It is a scenic drive surrounded by high mountains with yaks grazing in the green meadows and in the distance we can actually see the high Himalayas of Lantang and Sisapang Marines. As we drive across the scenic landscape, we notice Tengri Airport, which is one of the highest airport in the world. So, in the background, this is known as Tengri Maidan. Tengri Maidan, what is that? It has a historical importance. The vast plain of Tengri is the location of historic war between Nepal and Tibet. During the war, Nepal had captured Kuti, Kerung, and Tengri. Negotiations were made. Tibetans agreed to pay an annual subsidy to Nepal and allow a Nepalese trading station to be established in Lhasa. Tibet and Nepal signed a treaty never to invade Tibet again. Something interesting. So this is the this is the road towards uh, Mount Everest. So we are on the other side, Chinese side. So this entire range is the Himalayan range, the Himalayas. They are peaking in the cloud, that is Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. On the other side is Nepal, Namche Bazaar, Everest Base Camp, everything on the other side. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Lunch break. Lunch break. I don't know where we are. Eh? I can't find it. Has I know it? On the way. On the way. Eh, Tengri roof. Okay, Tengri roof of the wall. Tengri roof of the wall kitchen restaurant at an altitude of 4,200 meters. Wow, this is an experience. After having a delicious lunch, the scenic road trip continues towards Sigatse and there is yet another high mountain pass to cross which is situated at an elevation of 5100 meters. We are truly driving across the roof of the world. So currently the time is 7.30 in the evening. We have been driving for more than 11 hours now. It has been a very long journey from Kirong to Sigatse. And this is the last stop before we reach Sigatse. Take a look at the beauty, the view. Welcome to Tibet, beautiful Tibet. Okay, welcome to Sigatse. After 12 and a half hour, it's a big city. <laughs> big city in Tibet. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay, Boglai. Let's have some food. Sigatse Nepali restaurant. Sigatse Nepali restaurant. Okay, wonderful yes. food. Namaste. 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 It 
it has been a very tiring journey today. About twelve and a half hour. Only. And uh, we are here at a Nepali restaurant here at Sigatse. Warm welcome. It's Khata. Shikatsego milk tea. Shikatsego milk tea. Cheers. 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 It was a very long drive today, but a very scenic road trip from Kerong to Sigatse, almost 600 kilometers in distance. And it's time to have a much needed dinner at a Nepalese restaurant in Sigatse. Good morning from the beautiful city of Sigatse. Good morning. Good morning. We stayed at this beautiful hotel, very nice hotel here. And uh, it's currently 7.30 in the morning. And, uh, we'll have our breakfast now and then head up to this monastery. If you can see it in the background. And then we will continue our journey towards the Lhasa. Once more. Our guide in Tibet. Sweet guide. Sweet guide. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Lanzum. I'm from east side of the Tibet, one of the Simon village. Okay. It's called Beijangzi. Okay. Uh, but I've been 13 years in Nepal. 13 oh. years in Nepal. Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's the name of this hotel? Wang Wang Run Hotel. Wang Run. Yes. Okay. Wang Run, Wang Run Hotel Wang in Sigatse. It's a famous hotel in Sigatse. Famous hotel in Sigatse. Yes. Okay. Where for how long? The city of Sigatse, which is the second largest city in Tibet, is situated at an altitude of 3,836 meters. We are heading up towards a famous monastery which is located on a hill in the center of Sigatse, known as Tasilumpu Monastery. So this is the streets of Sigatse. Uh, just a few minutes walk from the hotel. And, uh, we are heading towards the Gumba. Uh, I noticed a lot of electric scooters with uh, roof. The temperature here is very cool at the moment. It's perfect. And today we have a beautiful weather. Slightly overcast, but uh, a beautiful day for a walk. Scooter salon, yeah? Hello. Why electric? A third hike from the hotel, we have now arrived at Tasilumpu Monastery. Founded in 1447 by the first Dalai Lama, this monastery is historically and culturally important monastery in Sigatse. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very warm good morning. <laughs> so this Tasilumpu Monastery has uh, almost nearly 500 years history. So this Tajulumu Monastery was built in 1447 by the first Dalai Lama. This Tajulumu Monastery is belongs to one of the biggest monasteries of the Gilupa school. In Tibet, we have six biggest Gilupa monasteries. Mm -hmm. One is Tajulumu, mm -hmm. Sera, Sera, Depu, mm -hmm. Gandeng, uh, Gumbum, mm -hmm. Labrang Tajiki, six of them. So these monasteries, they used to have more than 3,800 monks. Now they they are only around 800 monks. Mm -hmm. Also in this monastery, they have like three colleges, 26 houses. Houses like that, if you want to be a monk in this mm -hmm. monastery, you cannot go anywhere. White big wall, that's for Tanga. Tanga. Once in a year, the lower one, the, shop, lower one, the golden rooftop, is the main part in this traditional monastery and the oldest part which was built in 1447. That is the big assembly hall. 
to Sky feed. Barry. In Buddhism, we believe even we are die, we are sacrificing our bodies to feed the fish mm. and other animals like that. So we are believing the birds can eat this body and fly into the sky, hoping that our souls can go into the heavens. Ranjana Lipi is an ancient Newari script dating back to 1100 CE. It is still used in Nepal by the Newar people to write the Newar language. The script is used in most of the Mahayan and Bajrayan monasteries. If you put your finger in here and spin clockwise, eh? Uh. Then it's good luck, right? Eh? <laughs> good luck! Mati say do that. No, do that. Do that, eh? Oh, this spin. Tase Lumpu Monastery is the traditional seat of successive Panchen Lamas, the second highest ranking Tulku lineage in the Geluk tradition of the Tibetan Buddhism and houses the tallest and the largest bronze statue of Maitreya Buddha. The colossal statue of Buddha is decorated with more than 1400 precious ornaments and according to historical records was crafted by 110 artisans in four years. We are this beautiful monastery at uh, Sigatse. It's a huge monastery. It has a lot of positive energy. And we have been blessed to be here. Why you Oh, you're so 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 Cleaning the floor. But it's very heavy, eh? Oh, my strong wife. We just had a wonderful tour inside this uh, historical monastery. It's a very big complex. And uh, there is the tomb of Panchen Lama and a huge statue of Maitri Buddha as well. Uh, I couldn't suit them because photography is not allowed. But anyhow, this monastery has a beautiful artwork. The architectural and everything was out of this world. This place has a lot of positive energy and it's definitely recommended if you are visiting Tibet. After visiting the iconic monastery, we head back on the road towards the largest city in Tibet, Lhasa.
Tibetan restaurant. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's about it? The road to Lhasa, like most of the roads in Tibet, is a scenic route across many high mountain paths alongside rivers and lakes, both man-made and natural. Outside it's snowing at the moment. It's freezing cold. Inside it's quite warm. Tibet, the roads climb up very high altitude. You know, so whenever there is a pass, uh, on average 4,700 meters. Sometimes goes above 5,000 meters, and so it is a thrilling experience because uh, this is more than marble. Take a look at it. Roads at this altitude, this high altitude. Outside. High mountains. Freezing cold. Freezing cold. Tibet is the land of vast and infinite lands, plateaus that sit in high altitudes, arid and wildly rugged yet present something soft and serene. Tibet's landscape is so diverse and impressive that it's worth a visit. Okay, so this is the highway. This is from Sigatse and towards uh, Lhasa. As you can see, we are at an altitude of 5,000 meters. It's snowfall, rainfall, all together. Take a look at the road. This is so beautiful. The scenery, so beautiful. This is really amazing that, you know, it's hard to believe, like that there is a road along these high passes in Tibet. Amazing. Driving up the scenic countryside through the high mountain pass, we notice a huge lake. There are more than 1500 lakes in Tibet and we are now driving alongside one of the biggest lakes in Tibet known as the Yamdo Lake, which is situated at an altitude of 4441 meters. Uh, we call the Yamdo Lake. It Yamdo has, Lake? Yeah. This 
this is the longest lake in Tibet. Longest lake in longest Tibet. Longest lake. It has uh, 72 kilometers. 72 kilometers? Yeah, wow. covered by the 42 meter. Wow. Longest lake in Tibet. This is the longest yeah. lake in Tibet. Today we can see very clean. Yeah, we can see some pika over there. Yeah. What pika is that? That one? Yeah. This is a WK pick. WK pick? Yeah. Oh. Yes. So our guide in Tibet, Miss uh, Mrs. Mrs. Ramzom. Ramzom. Okay. Nice. Thank you very much. Eh? You're welcome. Surrounded by many snow-capped mountains, this sacred lake is the highlight of today's road trip. Its incredible turquoise color and sheer size is a visual treat for the eye. Truly beautiful. Today's road trip from Sigatse towards Lhasa is a scenic route driving alongside the beautiful Lake Yamdo and it took us around 10 hours to cover a distance of around 360 kilometers. Welcome to Lhasa, the largest city in Tibet and in the distance we can see the iconic fortress of Potala Palace. Welcome to Lhasa. Welcome to Lhasa. Eh?
What an incredible journey. Started our journey with a tour of the incredible Tasilumbu Monastery and driving across a beautiful scenic route towards Lhasa. It's been a beautiful and a very memorable journey, coming all the way from Nepal, covering a distance of almost 1200 kilometers. And now it's time to treat ourselves with a much needed dinner. Tonight, it's time for some Chinese cuisine at a local restaurant. Good morning. Good morning from Lhasa. We are at Debu. Debu Monastery. De okay, this is yeah. an old monastery? Yeah, oldest monastery. Oldest? Yeah. No, no, in Lhasa. In Lhasa. Yeah. Older than Potala? Potala is not monastery. Not it's monastery. A, it's a palace. Oh, it's a palace. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. In the 7th century, we called the kingdom. Okay, kingdom. And okay. then 70th century, we called the palace. Palace. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, though. It's one of the biggest monasteries from the yellow hat. Yesterday in Shigati, I told you in Tashilumbu, we have six biggest Kilukwa monastery. This is one of it. This monastery <laughs> was built in 1416. One of the foremost disciples of Tsongkhapa called Jamyang Chichi. This monastery have four college, 36 houses, one big assembly hall. Beside this, they have a lot of palaces for the Dalai Lama. Can you see this building? This building is for from number second to Number fifth Dalai Lama has residentials. On this, there is one Maitreya Buddha, which is called Chamba Tongdu. Chamba Tongdu means once you see this image, all your sins, bad loss can be washed away. What is this pole for? This pole is called a prayer pole. Prayer pole. Prayer pole. This is mainly put on the main important area of okay. the monasteries. Drepung Monastery is the largest monastery in Lhasa. During the time when Buddhism was thriving in Tibet, up to 10,000 monks were living in this monastery. The main assembly hall is the largest structure in the complex and the most impressive as well. The assembly hall is a three-story building with a large terrace overlooking the city of Lhasa and the valley and houses a three-story tall statue of Maitreya Buddha. Drepung Monastery was the residence of the Dalai Lamas before the construction of Potala Palace was completed. So this Jamia Langa is the first foundation first building in this Debu monastery. Okay, why this first foundation? Because inside we can see on a rock, there's a nature step of a Manjushri Buddha, Muslim Buddha. So the Jamyang Chiji found this uh, special place. He started from here. Okay, it's 12.15 uh, p.m. in the afternoon. It's quite sunny. It's time for food. Time for lunch. We're going for the lunch at this restaurant. Okay, time for Hello. some local delicacies. Yes. I know, Tibetan food. In this restaurant. Yeah, it's quite crowded. Yeah. Yes. Dutcha. Tibetan dutcha. Tibetan butter tea. 
Ali Tari Rahul. Okay, having some Tibetan tea, milk tea. Good one. Oh, double pat. Double pat. How much are you today? I don't want to eat today. Pie is very good. And uh, just like in Nepal, you know, you can add dalwa as much as you want. Here you can add the thukpa noodle as much as you want. So here is another bowl of thukpa. So let's enjoy. Mm. Very good. After having our lunch, we headed towards the iconic world heritage site of Potala Palace, the Winter Palace of Dalai Lama. Good afternoon. So good afternoon. Good afternoon. Very nice day. Very nice day. Beautiful, clear, sunny day today here at Lhasa. And we are next to the historical <laughs> monument, <laughs> the iconic Potala Palace. <laughs> Welcome to the Potala Palace in Tibet. Tashi Dele. Tashi Dele. Tashi Dele. <laughs> As the Winter Palace of the Dalai Lama, from the 7th century CE, the complex symbolizes Tibetan Buddhism and its central role in the traditional administration of Tibet. The White Palace contains the main ceremonial hall with the throne of the Dalai Lama. Okay, time to climb up the Potala. So, this is the staircase. As you can see, it's very wide. Pretty steep. So, take it slow. I better take it sideways, like this. The Potala Palace is a huge building, as you can see. It's very huge. It's truly a marvel of human engineering. We are on top of Potala. And here you can see this is all yak wool. As you can see, this is a big curtain. You see that? Wow, all yak wool. Waterproof, snowproof, freeze proof. Also, you can see the doors are very nicely curved, decorated on the wall, on the wood. Okay, these all are. The architectures are from 17th century time. 17th century time, okay? Also, the Potala Palace, the building is not really like strictly built up. 
it's a little bit slope up. Slope up. The base of this Portola Palace, the foundation, almost five meters thick. Come going up, up and up, then become thinner and thinner. Look how thick the wall is of Potala Palace. That's almost three meters, I guess. Three to four. Okay, so here we are at Portala Palace. So on the very top, that is the palace for the Dalai Lama. So during some special time, the Dalai Lama can watch all these things from the top. Okay. Nearby all these are like a tasha, like where the monks live in this area, okay? And then there is the main entrance. There's like a three stairs, the middle one always closed. That middle one is always for the Dalai Lama, okay? Mm -hmm. The normal people mostly from the left hand, going up, right hand coming down like that, okay? Then, the top one is the Dalai Lama, the lower part is the minister of the Tibet. Then lower part, the number third one, is the Tibetan offices, different offices. But now no more use. All are closed down, okay? Here you can see the traditional ancient toilet of Potala Palace. Take a look at it. There you go. There you go. No photos. Okay. Inside, no photos. Okay. Taking photos and videos inside the Potala Palace is not permitted. Therefore, we encourage you to come here and visit Potala Palace and see it for yourself, the priceless historical art and architecture of Tibetan Buddhism. A masterpiece of Tibetan art and architecture, our visit to Potala Palace is definitely one of the most mesmerizing experience of our Tibet tour. In the evening, we made our way through the old town of Lhasa towards Vakor Street which is a famous location and one of the most featured, charming cultural and historical location at the very center of Lhasa. Walking through the narrow alleyways alongside historical buildings, it's like going back in time. It is definitely one of the best preserved original look of Lhasa from the ancient time.
At the very center of this complex lies the Jokhang Temple, which is the most revered religious structure in Tibet. Built by King Srongcheng Gompo in 652 to marry the princess of Nepal, Vrikuti, and houses the statue of Sakyamuni Buddha. Day 5 of our Tibet travel and we are heading towards the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Norvalinga Palace, which is the traditional summer residence of the successive Dalai Lamas. The palace is situated in the west side of Lhasa, a short distance to the southwest of Potala Palace. Norbulinga means treasure garden in Tibetan language and is the world's highest, largest and best preserved ancient botanical garden. According to historic records, there used to be a spring here that could cure disease. Kalsung Gyatso, the seventh Dalai Lama, often fell ill and came here to take a bath every summer. First built in the 1740s, the palace complex is known for its exotic botanical garden with more than 100 species of rare Himalayan plants. We are now entering the main palace complex, the most important palace where the 14th Dalai Lama lived. The main palace complex is a beautiful two-story building with a wheel of tarma and two listening deer decorating the roof. After visiting the beautiful Norbulinga Palace, we made our way towards one of the most important Buddhist pilgrimage sites in Tibet, the iconic holy site of Jokhang Temple. Jokhang Temple is the oldest and the holiest temple complex, dating back to more than 1400 years. It is the most revered religious structure in Tibet, built by King Srongchen Gompo in 652 to marry Nepalese Princess Vrikuti, daughter of King Amsu Burma. Along with Princess Vrikuti also came an image of Buddha. Jokhang Temple 
was originally built by Nepalese craftsmen to house the Buddha image brought by the Nepalese queen. The statue of Buddha has similar resemblance to the ancient statue of Buddha in the Golden Temple of Patan in Nepal. Many Nepalese artists worked to construct this beautiful temple. Later, to establish a peaceful relationship with the Chinese Emperor Taizong, Srongcheng Gompo married one of his daughter, Princess Wenchen, as his second wife. Queen Wenchen also brought an image of Buddha, which is venerated inside the temple complex. ตอนดูแค่สีเนื้อว่าอยู่อาร์ตคนเดียวจังเลยล่ะน่าจะดังเลยมั้งล่ะทั่วปัดจริงมั้งล่ะเนี่ยเนื้อว่าที่ส่ง
Happy birthday to you. Fui a mala. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Clear blue sky. And uh, we are at an altitude of 4000 meters on our way towards the Gangden Monastery. Ganden Monastery is one of the great three Geluk University monasteries of Tibet. The other two are Sera Monastery and Drepung Monastery, which we featured in the earlier videos. Ganden Monastery is located at the top of a mountain at an altitude of 4,300 meters and was founded in 1409 by Lama Chongkhapa. Ganden in Tibetan means the pure land of Tushita. Tushita is the heavenly land where Maitreya or future Buddhas resides. Inside the colossal Ganden complex, Lama Chongkhapa gave teachings in his chapel. At the entrance, we can see the image of Chongkhapa and his two main disciples. During a period of time, Ganden Monastery was severely damaged. The ancient buildings have all been demolished. A great quantity of the cultural relics in the temple was ransacked and even the stupa of Songkhapa was fully destroyed. It is said that the world's third largest diamond disappeared from this monastery. Today, however, this monastery has been fully restored to its original appearance.
After an enlightening spiritual tour around the Ganden Monastery, we headed back towards the central Lhasa for a surprise party organized by our tour organizers in Tibet. It is a pleasant surprise as we are greeted inside the hotel for a Tibetan feast with a local Tibetan musical dance performance and a beautiful song by a well-known Tibetan pop star.
After enjoying the party, we headed out towards the iconic landmark location of Potala Palace. The palace looks specially beautiful in the evening, so if you are visiting Tibet, don't miss out on it. Hello, good evening from Potala Palace in Lhasa. Woo! Current time is 11 p.m. <laughs> local time and we are here at this beautiful Potala Palace. Hello. As you can see in the background, it's like a painting in Dhanka. What a beautiful masterpiece. Number 28, number 38, King of Tibet. He met the Guru Rinpoche. First point here. Yeah, meet. Meeting point. Ah, yeah. We call it Sunga. Ah, Sunga. Ah. Also, at first time when they're meeting, yeah. the king didn't really respect the Guru Rinpoche. Ah. He thought he's a normal kind of like a saint from India. Ah, yeah. But when they are going to shake hands, yeah. Guru Rinpoche's hand, there comes out fire, wow. energy fire. So the king really respect him and they prostrated and then later for regret of that they built all this stupa here. They have seven, six stupas built, built by the king himself in the 8th century. The stupa, all these stupas are stone, made with stone. Before, before this area there's a pump, like water pump. One question, what, what, is, what is the meaning of those ladders? This ladder the local people, they painted like that. I told you we have like a September 22 yeah. descending day. Before that, we whitewash all the monastery, our local houses. So during that time, the locals, they paint that, they're making a way to go to heaven after they die. Okay. Yeah. So that's the stay way to heaven. Way to heaven. So this is the location where the king met Padmasama for the yes, first, time. first time. Very first time. Shapu so Dele, good morning. So on our way today, we came across this very important historical archaeological site where the king of Tibet first met Guru Rinpoche for the very first time. Very first time. And all these stupas are made by the king himself. So here is an uh, old historical art of Guru Padmasambhav. As you can see, Guru Padmasambhav is standing. Most of the figures is seated. And this is the only one that I've seen in standing. During the 8th century, Guru Padmasambhav visited Tibet at the invitation of King Trisong Tiotsun, introducing Buddhism to Tibet for the very first time. He is known as Guru Rinpoche, the precious master and one of the founding fathers of Tibetan Buddhism. Built in the 8th century, Samya Monastery is the first Buddhist monastery to be built in Tibet. The monastery is believed to have been constructed in around 775 AD under the patronage of the 30th king of Tibet, Trisong Detsen, and it is said that Guru Padmasambhav tamed the local spirits for its completion. 
as the first monastery of Tibet. Samye is an important monastery for the Tibetan Buddhist culture. Samye is a beautiful monastery complex built in the shape of mandala that represents the Buddhist universe with continents, subcontinents, sun and the moon. The main temple complex of the monastery represents Mount Meru. The surrounding 12 chapels represents continents and subcontinents. There are also sun and moon temples to the south and north of the main chapel respectively. There are four large colored stupas at the four directions from the main temple. Over its more than a thousand years long history, Samye was under influence of different sects of Tibetan Buddhism. However, because of its founder Padmasambhava, it is usually associated with the Red Hat sect. After visiting the oldest monastery in Tibet, we then made our way towards another iconic monastery in Tibet called Sakya Monastery. Sakya Monastery is situated in the Sakya town, about 130 kilometers west of Sigatse, and is considered as the seat of Sakya school of Tibetan Buddhism. <laughs>
Sakya Monastery played an essential role in Tibetan history. It was once the center of political power in Tibet. Sakya Lamas allied with Mongol Khan. Due to the alliance, the Mongol Empire was converted to Tibetan Buddhism. The main assembly hall is an impressive structure with 16 meters high walls. Along the walls of the hall, you will see large statues of Buddha. The Buddha in the center contains relics of the founder of the monastery. Next to the assembly hall is the Sakya library, containing the largest collection of scriptures in Tibet. There are 84,000 scrolls, most of them are Buddhist scriptures, some are elaborately decorated with gold letters and images of Buddha. <laughs> So when the world is peaceful, yeah. these books also settle down, right? Yes, settle down. Tibet, which lies beyond the mighty Himalayas, on the highest plateau in the world and known as the roof of the world, with its heavenly lakes, mysterious rivers and breathtaking landscape. Tibet is nature's paradise and has left us amazed with an unforgettable experience of the land, people, its long history 
ancient culture, heritage and religion. Thank you very much for watching our Tibet travel video and we encourage you to visit Tibet for an unforgettable experience. With that being said, we would also like to thank our Tibet tour organizer, our lovely guides in Tibet and the women group of Hakka Toll in Lalitpur for organizing this memorable trip. Namaste, Tashidele and Jojolapa.